So this is the method for creating the Calgram once you're inside Adobe Illustrator. You should have the image of your animal placed inside Adobe Illustrator. Inside your layer window, you then need to select that layer, choose from the menu, and select template to lock it in place. Also lightening up the object. The next layer is then uh, placed over the top, and this is where you can actually start using the type. I'm going to start using the type tool, which is located immediately to the right of the pen tool. If you click on that, or the letter T on the keyboard, if you tap once, you're given an opportunity with a flashing cursor to then type in the actual word you want. Don't be confused in thinking that you need to click and drag to create a shape, as this will create a text box you will then come across various different problems. The first being that in this circumstance, which is the correct way, we can actually click and drag, holding down shift and enlarging the text. In this circumstance right here, uh, let me just change the coloration of the layer real quick. In this circumstance right here, if I increase the box, decrease the box, the size of the text does not increase with it. So you will have a hard time getting this to work if you actually create a text box. Instead, I would rather you tap once and then be able to type in your words. So once we've actually got a couple of the words created, we then need to go choose a specific type of font. A couple things to keep in mind that will make a successful final image are that you actually choose a thick, bold font, one that is not very thin. So if we choose a bold version, right here, this will thicken up the actual thickness of the lettering and cover up more of the picture. The more of the picture you can cover up, the better the final result. A couple other good font choices will appear if you take a look, close look through them. Impact, right here, is another one. And another one after that you might want to try using is Rockwell Extra Bold. And that has a very bold appearance to it. So between the two you'll notice a big difference. These are very skinny, thin letters. These are very bold, thick letters. Another one is Helvetica or Arial Black also. So you have a couple different font choices. Keeping it as capital letters, where they're all the same height, will also cover up more space. So try to reduce the amount of text you use in upper and lowercase lettering. Helvetica right here, but in a bold version, is also a good choice. Before we actually get started, the other part to be aware of is the spacing in between each letter. This is also known as the kerning, and that is this can be altered. So we can double click, place the cursor between the letter, hold down the option key, and then click the cursor keys to actually pull the lettering in closer to one another, covering up more of the picture behind. So you might want to actually adjust this for some of your letters when the lettering gets too far apart from one another. You can also do this in one large amount so that it affects all the letters at once without double clicking onto a word. You just do it and apply it, holding down Option and using the cursor keys to tighten up the spacing in between each of the letters. Once we've actually got a couple words ready to place on the actual element, I would like you to refer back to your sketchwork and note exactly where you are going to put the word, how big it's going to be, and how it's going to fold to the shape of the animal. The next step is to use the Object tab at the very top, come down to where it says Envelope Distort, and Make with Mesh. Using this tool right here, we can actually change the shape of an object, and we can actually define how many different anchor points 
I need it to actually change that shape. So for simplicity purposes, we can knock that down to one row and one column. When we do this, it then places the frame exactly around the word, and then we can start to place and alter the shape of this letter. This is done using the direct selection tool, and we then click on each anchor point and lift the handle, dragging to the left, to the right, and to level it up vertically. So if I lift up the anchor point by tapping on it once, pulling it up, and then pulling the handle down, we can change the shape of the actual lettering. We want to actually move the underside of it too to match. And you'll get lettering that actually matches up. A couple mistakes we can make is where the lettering goes so tiny you cannot read the word or it becomes so long, it's hard to also read. We want to take up this image with lots of different letters, so don't cover it with two words and leave it at that. Another mistake that can be made is that the handles are extended too far uh, in each direction, and then it's again very difficult to read. So make sure that the actual lettering stays fairly vertical pulling back the handles into their original positions. So again, hold, click on once on the anchor point in each corner, click and drag to reshape, and push it into a certain part of the animal. When you're done, so find a different word to work on, and then start to keep, and keep placing the words over the top in the right direction until it fills up the whole picture. So, object, envelope distort, make with match. I'm going to keep it at one row, one column, and click OK. Again, using the direct selection tool to tap on an anchor point, drag the lettering down, and fill it into the space, making sure it doesn't misshape too much. And I have full control over each corner trying to actually fit the letters into the shape of the animal. Do this one more time. I would highly recommend sticking with only two or three different fonts, not continuing to change the font. Stick with a font that is bold, it's got a lot of black ink, and covers up a lot of the picture. you might find is impact. And that is a very thick style of letter. Obviously with certain words you want to be able to apply them to the exact location on the animal. And in this circumstance I will want to actually rotate it into place. Four you actually place it there, make sure that you go ahead and complete the envelope distort, make with mesh first, and then rotate it afterwards. As it will be hard to actually apply the mesh after you rotate it. So again, click and drag the anchor points to turn and rotate to fit into the actual shape of the animal. If you obviously miss certain parts of the animal, you can obviously keep generalizing it. You can obviously get a still good view of it. And obviously, you can go back to your layer, turn it off, and slowly see as you build up this image and find the result. This is obviously one that I created earlier. I turned off the layer type that I was creating and put back on exactly the area that I'd already created. You can see that all these letters are now fitting to the shape of the animal. And by the time you turn off the picture underneath, you should end up with the finished result. Instead of putting a background in there, 
changing the color of your object. In regards to picking colors from your photograph that are similar to the animal. If you want, you could then place it into some kind of advertisement or poster relating to the actual animal itself. And then finally, you can turn off the template or you can delete the layer, leaving only the words that you placed on there. Make sure you save this. Put the title Calagram in there, along with your name, and save this to your documents.